Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to calculate with some dates. So, I've got a simple little uh, mock table here. I've got several employees, and I've got the date they were hired on, and I want to determine their years of service. And working with dates is pretty easy as long as you understand how Excel and many other programs treat dates. Dates are treated as numbers, and let me give you an example off over here to the side. If I plug in some dates, and I'll plug in my birthday, there's my birthday, I'll plug in another date, how about, uh, what is today's date? For today, I'll just use the today function. There's today's date. I'm doing this on October 23rd, 2011. And I'm going to plug in another date too. January 1st, 1900. So I've got three dates entered into cells. These dates are really numbers formatted to look like dates. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take these dates and I'm going to copy them right over here. There we go. So I've got cells with two dates in them. And I'm going to convert the ones on the right to numbers, or comma-style numbers. There we go. So my birth date, May 21st, 1973, is really the number 26,805. Today's date, October 23rd, 2011, is really 40,839. And January 1st, 1900, is the number 1. So, Excel dates are really numbers, and these numbers represent the number of days from January 1st, 1900. So, 1-1-1900 one, one, is 1. Therefore, you should understand that 1-2-1900, oops, wrong date, 1-2-1900, I'll copy that over comma style is the number two and this allows us to subtract and add dates so January 2nd 1900 minus January 1st 1900 is really two minus one which is one day one day in between so since we can subtract one date from another date we can find out how many days are in between so let's give it a shot so for years of service, I'm going to take the bigger number, the current date, and for current date, I'm going to use the today function, which is simply today with an empty set of parentheses. There's no parameters for that. And I'm going to subtract the employee's hire date. So the today minus the date of hire for that particular employee. And by default, it's formatting here as a, as a, as a date. No big deal. I can just change that over to a comma. And if I autofill this down, there we go. So I can see that employee one has been working for 6,107 days, employee two for 4,617 days. It's not a very useful way to display years of service, though. So since this formula represents the number of days, I should be able to correct it to convert it into the number of years. And actually, I'll do this up here in my formula bar. I'm going to take this current formula and I'm going to enclose it in parentheses. This represents the number of days the employee has worked. I'm going to divide that by the number of days per year. And you can do this in a few different acceptable ways. You can divide by 360. You can divide by 365. I like to divide, to divide by 365.25, the number of days per year. Um, so each year there's a quarter day, and then of course every four years you get that extra day for leap day. So the number of days divided by the number of days per year will get us the number of years. Auto fill this down. Excellent. So now I can see how many years each employee has worked for the company.